Welcome to the Journey of the Hero. This video will introduce you to Joseph Campbell's concept of the monomythical hero, a mythological story as old as time itself. It is a story of adventure, of self-realization, discovery and development, and is a story told in every generation and in every culture. The story of the hero's journey will not only provide you with the framework and thematic focus for CM 107, but it will also challenge you to take the call to accept the call to action and to journey on the quest for writing excellence. As you will soon see, the hero represents the potential within us all. Although mythological heroes are generally born of mysterious circumstances or may have parents who are royal or who may be gods, the hero is not necessarily stronger, better, or greater than common man or woman. The hero instead goes on a journey that challenges him or her to change and transform into the hero, and during this process, he or she seizes an opportunity and develops his or her strengths that are either unknown or hidden. That is exactly what writing is. Writing is, in effect, a journey similar to the one taken by the hero. If you take the call, you will find the inner writer waiting to emerge. You will build your hidden strengths and then be able to use your writing powers to not only communicate effectively with others but also to help other people and even change their lives. Joseph Campbell was one of America's most important thinkers, writers, and philosophers. He studied the world's cultures, their history, their literature, their art, and music. In his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Joseph Campbell explores the importance of the hero figure in our history, development, and current value systems. The hero, according to Campbell, is a common archetype found in all cultures and all periods of history. The hero represents the potential within us all, the power and strength within, waiting to be realized. It would be impossible to list every hero in the history of world culture, but here is a short list of some figures who you may or may not be familiar with. Of course, heroes are not just figures out of our past. Contemporary culture is still obsessed with the concept of the hero, and our books, movies, and television stories are filled with heroes, and this list of very familiar names can only touch the surface. Whether the hero is a warrior from ancient Chinese culture, 5th century king of Britain, a 20th century vampire slayer living in Sunnydale, California, or a lightsaber wielding Jedi in a story that takes place a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, the story that is told draws us in, reminding us of an ideal, the potential within us all, the hero we want to be. In his famous book published in 1949, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Joseph Campbell describes the hero's journey this way. A hero ventures forth from the world of common day into a region of supernatural wonder. Fabulous forces are there encountered, and a decisive victory is won. The hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to bestow boons on his fellow man. If we simplify Campbell's thesis, there are basically three main stages to the journey the hero takes. Departure, initiation, return. Each of these steps or stages can be further broken down and explored in detail, and these steps may have parallels to your own journey as a writer. As you move through this presentation, consider how these steps might be relevant to your own journey in the quest for writing excellence. While this presentation won't cover each and every stage of the journey, and while each mythical heroic figure is obviously unique and individual, Campbell's theory is that each heroic journey begins with a departure. Whoever the hero is, and wherever the journey takes him or her, the hero must first move outside his or her normal, ordinary, and familiar life and experiences and move into the unknown, into an adventure, but only if he or she is willing to accept the call to adventure. This otherwise seemingly ordinary person must be willing to depart from his or her own familiar and comfortable world and step into the brave new world. During this first stage of the journey, the call to action, the person who will become the hero is compelled to accept a challenge to encounter a situation that is unusual and often unexpected. 
Perhaps a problem arises that requires a solution, or perhaps an all-knowing herald or guide comes to the person who presents the challenge to take the adventure. Think of Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings offering Frodo Baggins the opportunity to venture out of his comfortable, well-fed world of the Shire to take the ring to the fires of distant and dangerous Mount Doom so it can be destroyed. Or imagine the giant Hagrid coming to offer to take Harry Potter out of the ordinary muggle world and transport him to the adventures awaiting him at Hogwarts School for Wizards. Remember the holographic image of Princess Leia that R2-D2 has stored in his memory bank? This message from the mysterious and beautiful figure asking for help is Luke Skywalker's call to adventure. In most heroic stories, the hero usually does at first refuse the call to action. Self-doubt makes the soon-to-be hero question his or her abilities. The whole notion of moving away from the comfort of the known, the expected, the usual, and to instead venture forth into the dangers of the unknown may at first be too overwhelming. The situation, though, compels the hero forward, and perhaps something deep inside the hero knows, though, that this indeed is his or her calling, and he or she accepts. This does not mean that he or she immediately loses these self-doubts, or that the journey comes to is not a challenge. Remember that in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker at first does not want to leave his home planet. He may have dreamed of leaving, but when the actual call to adventure comes, he doubts himself. Campbell also draws our attention to the importance of the helper or guide and supernatural aid in the heroic stories that populate our history. If our hero is willing to accept the call to adventure, he or she is often aided by either a supernatural figure or a helper. Buffy the Vampire Slayer has her watcher, Mr. Giles. Luke Skywalker has Obi-Wan Kenobi. Frodo has Gandalf. Batman has his all-knowing butler, Alfred. These guides educate, train, and help the soon-to-be hero see what he or she is truly made of. Another common theme that Campbell identifies as being central to the story of the hero is that of the amulet and the elixir. In addition to knowledge, the hero is aided by given tools needed to accomplish his or her goals. Harry Potter is aided by his father's invisibility cloak. Wonder Woman has her golden lasso that compels others to tell the truth. King Arthur has a sword, Excalibur. These amulets and elixirs, usually a magical potion, help to bring good luck and ward off evil. Before the hero can put these amulets and elixirs to use along with the guidance and knowledge bestowed upon him or her by the helper, Campbell argues that the hero must first cross the threshold and literally depart away from the world he or she knows and is comfortable with. This stage of the journey is where the hero actually crosses into the world of the unknown, leaving behind the world of safety and familiarity. Whether it is the safety of his beloved Shire that Frodo must leave behind, possibly never to return, or whether it is Clark Kent's leaving the safety of his adopted parents' farm, this step represents an important move forward for the hero. The threshold itself is a barrier that has to be crossed, and it comes with great risk. Since the hero is leaving his known world, he doesn't know the dangers that he may face, nor does he know that he will return. But it is the risk that must be taken. Campbell also identifies another stage in the departure process, a stage he calls into the belly of the whale. According to the hero's journey, the belly of the whale represents the final separation from the hero's known world and self. It is sometimes described as the person's lowest point but it is actually the point when the person is between or transitioning between worlds and selves. The separation has been made or is being made or being fully recognized between the old world and old self and the potential for the new world and self. The experiences that will shape the new world and self will begin shortly or may be beginning with this experience which is often symbolized by something dark, unknown, and frightening. In effect, this may be the hero's first encounter with real danger, and while the hero may at first appear not capable of surviving, he will, and this will be his first indicator that he or she is indeed capable of moving forward in the journey. Think back to Star Wars again. Only after the Imperial stormtroopers have killed his aunt and uncle 
does Luke Skywalker agree to leave with Obi-Wan Kenobi? According to Campbell, the next major stage in the journey is the initiation itself. In this part of the journey, the hero will face many, many challenges, trials, and tribulations. He or she will face many, many temptations and will certainly feel unprepared for and unworthy of the test he or she is undergoing. By withstanding these tests, however, the hero will prove his or her mettle and undergo a transformation, becoming the true hero that he or she was destined to become, and both the hero and his or her culture will receive bountiful rewards as a result of what he or she has gone through and endured. In The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Campbell says that the initiation itself hinges on what happens during the road of trials. As his phase suggests, this is the long venture itself. The hero faces various trials and tribulations, each of which tests the hero's ability to overcome problems. They are both physical and psychological in nature, and they may very well push the hero to the brink. These trials may be progressively difficult, but the difficulty is necessary as each test strengthens the hero. They give the hero an opportunity to build skills so the final challenge can be faced and overcome. Campbell emphasizes the fact that the hero is not infallible. The hero may indeed fail from time to time, but even failure can allow for progress and development. They can show the hero how to survive the challenge the next time, and this education will definitely prove valuable when he or she faces the final or ultimate challenge. Think about the many challenges Harry Potter faces along the journey. Time after time he is challenged. His battle with Lord Voldemort covers a span of many, many years, and until the final battle, he is unable to destroy his nemesis. As a wizard, he does not always cast the right spell, nor does he always come out unscathed. In the fourth book and movie, during the Triwizard Tournament, Harry is unable to resolve the situation as he hoped, but he learns from the experience and this will ultimately be valuable to him when he faces Lord Voldemort in the final battle. Campbell also encourages us to remember the importance of temptations to the development of the hero. According to Campbell, along the journey the hero faces many temptations. In many ancient stories, a beautiful woman will tempt the hero, seducing him and distracting him from his goal. Think of Odysseus and the temptation to end his quest to return home to his beloved Penelope and his only son, all at the hands of the nymph. She is not, however, the only temptation he must overcome. Remember that his crewmates fall prey to the temptations on the island of the Lotus Eaters, for example, and it's only through Odysseus' great desire to return home that he too does not fail for the temptations that the exotic isle presents to him. The hero's responses to these temptations demonstrate his or her integrity and strength if he or she does not fall for the trap. Examples include Frodo's wanting to give the ring to others, or Luke Skywalker's temptations to go to the dark side. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is distracted by her love of Angel and is often tempted to run away just because of the weight of the world is on her shoulders. Remember though, even though they are human and sometimes do fall for temptations, they ultimately remember their goals and push forward. According to Campbell, transformation and rebirth are at the heart of the initiation itself. This stage of the journey involves a metaphorical or literal death and rebirth of the hero. Often called apotheosis, this step is where the hero reaches his or her ultimate potential through enlightenment, transcending former weaknesses and gaining self-possession at the height of their potential. Buffy the Vampire Slayer dies and is reborn, strengthened by all she has faced and overcome. Willingness to sacrifice self is an important part of the stage of the journey. The last stage of the initiation process is when the hero, according to Campbell, succeeds in achieving what is known as the ultimate boon. The ultimate boon is the goal that the hero has been searching for all along. Harry Potter, through killing Lord Voldemort, achieves the goal of saving the world from the evil and destruction that Voldemort has wrought. After Frodo has destroyed the One Ring, peace is achieved. Indiana Jones finds the Holy Grail. Buffy the Vampire Slayer saved the world many times. 
According to Campbell, even though we might expect the story to end there, where the hero has achieved the ultimate boon, the story still moves forward, focusing on what happens after the goal has been achieved. The third step in the journey of the hero is the return. Returning from the journey itself can be a challenge for the hero. The hero may not want to return to the world of the normal, or he or she may long for more adventure. Bilbo Baggins in Lord of the Rings finds his fellow hobbits to sometimes be quite boring, and he wishes for better days and more adventures. Oftentimes the hero is wounded by the final battle to achieve the goal, and needs assistance from the guide figure or helper in order to return to the normal world. Frodo, wounded by his long journey, needs the help of the giant eagle to fly him away from the flood of molten lava. Either way, physically or psychologically, the hero is affected by the journey, and even the return home is itself the final challenge that he or she has to face. According to Campbell, returning to the known world that the hero originally left behind to take the quest is challenging, especially since the hero may in fact have to face more challenges. Oftentimes, the evil that has been defeated may in fact return again, to be defeated once more. The return itself, though, is another threshold, a symbolic rebirth back to the real world. The hero is, in fact, changed by the experiences on the journey and returning to our former selves or former home may not be easy or possible. The real challenge, though, is to return to the known world with the knowledge that the hero has gained and figuring out a way to share that knowledge with others. According to Campbell, the final stages of the return involve the battle within, which, if won, will result in the hero becoming a master of self and grant the hero what Campbell calls his freedom. Campbell says that at this stage the hero may have a battle within as he or she is conflicted between the two worlds he or she knows. The hero must achieve a balance between the common world and the exotic, distant world and experiences he or she encounters on the journey. Integration of these two worlds gives the hero a sense of peace and awareness of self. Internalization of the knowledge gained on the experience is achieved and the hero can apply this to the real world. Having conquered the internal conflict, the hero achieves a freedom to live, a freedom from fear of death, and more importantly, he or she can now become a ruler, a leader, a teacher, and share knowledge with others, helping those around him or her in daily life. He or she shares his boon, shares his treasures with others. Bilbo Baggins literally writes the story of his adventures, while Harry Potter grows up in a peaceful world and shares his story with his children. Now that you have learned about the story of the mythological hero, it's time to return to you and your journey as a writer. Like the hero is Campbell's monomyth, you as a writer face a similar call to adventure, an adventure that if you're willing to accept the call, will compel you to leave a world of the known and familiar behind and to instead take a journey into the unknown, a journey filled with challenges and temptations, but a journey also leading to the ultimate boon. You too will venture forth to a world of seemingly unknown where you will encounter new terms, formats, and new strategies and methodologies for writing effectively. You may at times be confused and feel unready for the challenge. This is normal and to be expected. Embrace the challenge. With the help and guidance of others, you will tackle the unknown and face your fears and worries, and then fight against the challenges and temptations that all writers face. You may also shed your former beliefs and writing behaviors, but this challenge in you will have powerful consequences. The change does not come easy, but never allow yourself to give in or quit. The trial and tribulations are worth it. A new, more powerful you will be born. Armed with a new knowledge and experience, you will indeed possess powerful tools that allow you to meet the challenges that each new writing experience presents. You will be the victor and to the victor comes great reward. With your newfound power, you can then use your knowledge and words to educate, inform, and help others, often changing their lives in untold ways. Now that you have changed, you can change others. This creates the potential within you to become a hero, 
if you use your strengths and skills in ways you never knew possible. As you consider this call to action and the adventure that lies ahead, consider these concluding words written by Joseph Campbell. We have not even to risk the adventure alone, for the heroes of all time have gone before us. The labyrinth is thoroughly known. We have only to follow the thread of the hero path. And where we had thought to find an abomination, we shall find a god. And where we had thought to slay another, we shall slay ourselves. Where we had thought to travel outward, we will come to the center of our own existence. And where we had thought to be alone, we will be with all the world. Good luck to you on your adventure, and may the Force be with you.